Well, good afternoon and welcome to Mineral Springs Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Wes and we're glad to have you with us for our Wednesday night Bible study time. And just a few moments, we'll be going back to uh, the book of Genesis and our study on pictures of Christ in Genesis. And I'm really enjoying this study. This is a fabulous study. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Abraham and Isaac in Gen Genesis chapter 22 where the Lord commands uh, Abraham to take Isaac up to Mount Moriah and sacrifice him. So uh, before we do that, we do want to go to the Lord in prayer. So I ask you if you would join us as we pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne today, God, we are so thankful for your blessings. We're so thankful, Lord, that you love us so much that you'd send your son to die for us on an old rugged cross. And God, we're so grateful for forgiveness of sins. We're glad, Lord, that we can call upon you and confess our sins before you, and you'll just forgive us of every sin we've ever committed. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful sunshine that we've experienced today. God, it's been a beautiful day, and we give you glory and honor for it. And God, as we come to the, together tonight with this Bible study, I pray that you would take the words that uh, we speak and the words out of your word and use them to encourage our hearts in the day that we live. I pray, Lord, for the Bryant family and the passing away of Harriet Bryant's um, aunt, uh, her mother's sister, God, that she's gone on to be with you in glory. Pray that you comfort their hearts and help them. I pray, Lord, if you would, that you would just uh, be with that whole family. I pray, Lord, for Ron and Brenda Carter as Ron has started his uh, cancer treatment today. I pray, Lord, that as he goes back and forth to Winston, God, that you would just help him and encourage his heart. And God, give him comfort during all this time. Lord, I pray that the treatments that he is taking will be beneficial. And I pray that you will heal him from this cancer. And God, we just call upon your name to do that if it be in thy will. Lord, go with us now as we study. Open our hearts and our minds to your word. And God, let us feast upon the table that you set before us. I ask you now to help me to rid myself of self and sin. And God, to make it all about Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us, and today, as we said, we're going to be going to Genesis chapter 22 for our Bible study time on pictures of Christ in Genesis, and uh, one of the things that we've learned over the last few weeks is that Abraham uh, had a son by the name of Isaac. We know that it was uh, a long time coming, that it was foreordained that he would be born years and years before he was ever born. God said, you will have a son. And through that son, he will be the father of many nations. And that his seed would be like the sand of the seashore and would be like the stars in the heavens in number. And we see that that took place in our study last week. And we, we, we know that as we go back to the beginning of Genesis that uh, we see slight glimpses of Christ in the early chapters, in the early part of the chapter. We see pictures of him in in the creation with Eve. We see him in pictures of the lamb that was slain and that God took the animal skin and clothed Adam and Eve. We saw that picture. We saw it in Noah's Ark. We saw pictures of Jesus throughout all the Ark. Then we come to Isaac and we study him and how he was the promised seed and how God, uh, uh, he's a picture of Christ. And today we have something unusual before us. You see, God promised Abraham a son. And at the age of 100 years old, and Sarah being 90 years old, they conceived, bore a son, and his name was Isaac. Now, some time has passed here. We don't know exactly how many years has passed. But we know it was he, Isaac at this time, was he was at least 15 to 20 years old. And so he's not a little baby. He's not a little boy. He, he's a grown man. And God comes... And he makes a, a request or really a command to test, to tempt, to try Abraham. I want to read these first two verses of Genesis chapter 22 for you. It says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. So as we come to this very point here, this is holy ground, folks. Honestly, this is, this is 
when I think of this area in Genesis 22, I think of Moses back in chapter 3 when he come before the uh, come before the ark. When he come before the burning bush, and how God told him to take thy shoes from off thy feet for the place where on thy standeth is holy ground. I feel like we ought to just slip our shoes off right now. And maybe you're at home and you got them off, but we ought to slip our shoes off because where we are right now is holy ground. When you study the Old Testament, there's a few different places that have very beautiful pictures of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and the necessity of it, the need of it. One of them is in Exodus chapter 12. We see it here in Genesis 22. We see it also in Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, beautiful pictures. Uh, Psalm 22 is a wonderful picture of it. But when we get here to this point, I want us to notice some really important things. As we study this and we read in verse number 2, he tells him, he says, he says unto Abraham, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac. When we read that, we think of the fact that John chapter 3, verse 16, says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now the word begotten means one and only. And here we see that we're seeing this picture of Isaac is a picture of Christ. He says, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. So God points out to Abraham, he's your only son. He is your one and only son. And then he goes a step further. He says, the son whom thou lovest. Abraham's world surrounded this boy Isaac. I believe after the birth of Isaac that Abraham probably didn't pay a whole lot of attention to anybody or anything but Isaac. Because God had promised so many blessings and so many promises that God had gave Abraham concerning Isaac that I really believe with all of my heart that, that Isaac was just, he was the rose in his garden. And I believe Abraham looked at him more than anybody or anything else. But notice that he said, whom thou lovest, well, I think about when Jesus was baptized. Uh, Luke chapter 3, uh, when Jesus was baptized and he come up out of the water, the Bible says a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. God loved Jesus. Jesus loved God. The, God the Father and God the Son love each other with an, love to infinity and beyond. It is an agape love, a love that loves no matter what, who, where, what, or why. They loved each other. And so we see that. But then notice in this same verse here, he says, uh, Take thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. It is a special place, a personal place. And he says, And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. So God tells Abraham to take his son and sacrifice him on a burnt offering to take him and tie him up, tie his hands up and, and, and to, to sacrifice him, to take a knife and to puncture his heart and to kill him and then to burn him. You think to yourself, why would God do that? I mean, and I believe Abraham probably thought the same thing, even though the Bible doesn't mention it. You know Abraham had to think to himself, now wait a minute. God, I wanted a son. You promised me a son for all these years, and now Sarah and I have a child, and you want me to kill him? That really just don't make a whole lot of sense. But God was teaching, not only just testing Abraham, but he was teaching Abraham something. You know, if you go back and you study, and we'll discuss this a lot more next week, but if you go back and you study when Paul is writing and to the church of Galatia, when he's writing to the church of Galatia in the book of Galatians, he says that the, that the gospel message was preached beforehand to Abraham. Abraham heard the gospel message. And so what's happening now is the gospel, the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so when we see this, he tells him to go to this place called Mount Moriah. It's really interesting. You go and you study the Bible and you read and you say, where is Mount Moriah? Well, it was a, apparently a three days journey. We'll see that in just a moment. But if you'll go and you'll study 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1, listen to this. 
Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah. You see, Mount Moriah was in a place in Palestine where the city of Jerusalem was built. It was a place where, where God founded the capital of Israel in Jerusalem. And Mount Moriah was right slap dab in the midst of it. And so there's, that's not coincidence either. That's foreordained. And so he tells him to go to this place. Now, another remarkable figure of the Lord Jesus Christ is his prophecy of the burial and the resurrection. And we see that as we proceed just a little bit further. And here's what we want to read. We read then it says in verse, uh, verse number three, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac, his son. And he clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went to the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. Three days journey. It took three days for Abraham, Isaac, and the, and the two servants to get to this place. Would you not agree with me on this? That during the time from the day that God told Abraham to sacrifice his son, to offer his son as a burnt offering. Don't you think that in the mind of Abraham, Isaac was already dead? I believe he thought that with all of his heart. We know as we study, even when you go to the book of Hebrews and it talks about this scenario and this scene that we're in, we know that Abraham believed that God was going to let him kill his son Isaac. But he also believed, and let me just read this while we got it open. Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only son, his only begotten son, it says, of whom it was said that in Isaac thy seed shall be called. Listen to this. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, whence also he received him in a figure. Now that word figure means a type or a picture of. And that's why we're doing pictures of Christ in Genesis. So those verses there in Hebrews tells us that Abraham sacrificed. He offered his son up, the Bible said. He offered him. He laid him down for God. That He was willing and ready and able to take his son's life and to be obedient to the word of God even when it doesn't make sense even when he can't explain it, even when he just sits there, maybe in his mind he's thinking, why am I having to do this? But he did it anyway. And the Bible says that, as we study this, that he, he, he got the wood, he got the fire, he had the knife, and they were on a three-day journey. And during that three days, I believe with all my heart that Abraham considered his son Isaac as already dead. That's just like, that's just like you and I. If we have a family member that has been told you just got days to live, in our mind when we leave the hospital room, even while they're still there, before they've passed away, in our mind we weep, we grieve, we reminisce, we think about things we've done, we think about places we went, we think about the time we spent with that individual, but in our minds, we already have them in the grave. We already have them in heaven. We already have them gone from this earth, although they're still here. That's what Abraham did, three days and three nights, just as Christ was in the heart of the earth, three days and three nights. So as they journey and they get there, they get to this place, and the Bible says uh, at the end of that verse, says, and on the third day he lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. I want you to notice, he tells them something that I think is very, very important. He tells the two men, he says, you abide ye here, verse 5, abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Have you ever wondered why that was? Why? Did Abraham tell the two servants, y'all stay here with the donkey. Me and Isaac, me and the lad are going to go. We're going to offer our worship to the Lord. 
and we will come again to you. And I, I noticed the, the wording that he says, and come again to you. He says, we will go yonder and worship and come again to you. He didn't say, we'll go worship and I'll come again. He said, we'll go worship and we'll come again. The reason he said that is, we go back to Hebrews chapter 11, where he said he believed God was able to raise him up even from the dead. I believe that Abraham had full vision of the gospel message of Jesus Christ. I believe he had full understanding that Jesus would come and he would die, but then he would be raised again. And I believe he knew that Isaac, if he killed Isaac, and if he lit that fire, and if he had Isaac's body consumed with the fire, I believe he believed with all of his heart that God would raise him up from the dead. He was full of faith in God, full of faith that God would keep his word, and he did. Amen. So then as they leave, they go up and listen to what it says. He tells them, you guys, you stay here. Me and the lad's going to go worship, and we will come again to you. Why, why was that? Think about this. This was something between the father and the son. We don't fully know what took place on the top of that mountain. We just know in part. We know what Moses wrote down. But here's what we do know. We know that something took place great between Abraham and Isaac. We don't know the words that were all said. We don't know the stories that was told between the two. Just as we don't know what took place on Mount Calvary fully. Now you say, wait a minute, preacher. I've got the Gospels. I've got the four Gospels. I can go and I can read and I can understand what took place. But think about this. Jesus hung on the cross from 9 o'clock in the morning to 6, to six in the afternoon. Or 3 in the afternoon, excuse me. And the Bible says from the third hour, and let me, let me just read it. The Bible tells us, when we study about Jesus going to the cross, it tells us that from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Six o'clock would have been 12 noon, nine o'clock, the ninth hour would have been three in the afternoon because Jewish timetable starts in the morning at six in the morning. And so from the sixth hour, from 12 noon to three in the afternoon, the Bible says that God turned out the lights in heaven. He blanketed the stars and the moon and the sun. The Bible says that God put a black drape over everything. And I believe he did that because what was taking place in that sacrificial situation was only between the Father and the Son. It had nothing to do with anybody else. No other man was needed. No other man could be involved. No other man's eyes could even take place on what was happening and what was going on. So what took place there is that there's, there was a transaction that took place between the father and the son, just as there was on Mount Moriah with Abraham and Isaac. And the, we see that until finally the culmination came in, uh, in the ultimate agonizing cry of Jesus when he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You see, when God turned it all out, when he turned the lights out and pitch black fell upon the earth, God turned his back on his son because he laid the sins of all the world, your sins, my sins, every man, woman, boy, and girl's sins from the beginning of time to the end of time. He laid all of our sins upon his son. And the Bible says Jesus uh, says that God cannot come into the presence of sin. So God turned his back on his son. That's why Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then the Bible says this, And Abraham took the wood, verse 6, Abraham took the wood for the, of the burnt offering. He laid it upon Isaac, his son. He took the fire in hand, a knife, and they went, both of them, together. They were in perfect harmony, perfect agreement. He takes the wood and he lays it upon Isaac. Now, the amount of wood that would have been required, Isaac would not have been able to hold his hands out like this and carry it. It would have been more than that. So I'm sure that it was in some kind of bundle that Abraham fixed, and I believe he put it on the back of Isaac. And so going up Mount Moriah, Isaac carried the wood 
with which he is to be sacrificed with. We all know what that's a picture of. It's a picture of Jesus carrying his cross up to Mount Calvary. The very cross that he would be sacrificed on. Let's read the rest. We're just about done here. The Bible says, verse 7, Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? You see, Isaac was a smart young man. He'd been to the sacrifices before. He knew what was to take place. And Isaac said, Father, I see the wood. I see the fire. But where is the sacrifice? And one of the greatest answers that I've ever heard in all the scriptures in verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. Now you notice that three different times in these verses it says they went together. Perfect harmony. Now here the Bible tells us that Abraham's answer, he didn't say God will provide for himself a sacrifice or a lamb. He said God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And that's exactly what God did about 2,000 years ago. He provided himself, God the Father, God the Son, being inseparable. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, Jesus said. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. So God did provide himself a sacrifice on Mount Calvary. Just as we read here, Abraham says that. And the answer that Abraham gave to Isaac was good for Isaac. Isaac was fine with it because the Bible says, and they went on up the mountain. Now we know this end of the story here in Genesis chapter 22 and I'm not going to go into any huge great detail on that but what I want us to understand is this Abraham believed God listen to verse 8 of Hebrews chapter 11 by faith Abraham when he was called to go into the excuse me, when he was called to go out into a place which he should should after receive for an inheritance obeyed he went out not knowing whether he was going he had no idea where god was sending but he had faith and he went when god told him he was going to have a son although he did falter which we all do he believed god when god told him to take his son his only son the son that he loves and take him up to a place and sacrifice him on mount moriah abraham believed god he had faith in god he had enough faith in God that he knew that if he sacrificed his son, that God would raise him up from the dead. Folks, let me ask you this question in closing today. What kind of faith do you have? Do you have Mount Moriah type faith? You know, Abraham just believed what God said. And what God said, Abraham put full 100% faith in God and God alone. That's what you and I need to do today. We need to put our faith in God, not in man, especially not in our government, not in the right wing nor the left wing. Let's put our faith in God. Let's believe God for great things. I, you know, I want to close it with this. I believe with all of my heart that God's not done with his church. I believe with all, you know, here we are at Mineral Springs and our numbers have de declined. Many of the people in the church have not came back. And I know we quote the Bible that says in the last days there will be a falling away. I understand that. I know that. And I believe that will take place. But listen, God is still doing some great things here. He still meets our needs according to his riches and glory. He's still blessing hearts. He's still saving lives. He's saving souls. He's, he's, he's saving folks. God is still up to something good. And I firmly believe that God's not done with me. I don't believe he's done with this church. I believe he is doing great things. And if you and I will agree together to put our faith in Jesus Christ and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit with a Mount Moriah faith, just believing God for everything that God said, trusting him above anything and everything else, I believe God's going to do some great things. And I don't know about you, but to that I say, praise the Lord, let it be.
Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I really enjoyed this Bible study, especially I love to study Genesis chapter 22. Gorgeous, beautiful. And we'll get to the rest of it in next week. But until then, we hope you have a great rest of the week. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord keep you. And may the good Lord make his face to shine upon you. God bless you is my prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Please be with everyone that's heard this message today. God, may it resonate in our hearts and our minds. God, may we find our, a resting place at your feet where we can just crawl up and hear your words, put our faith, our trust totally in you and in you alone. I pray that you'd bless this church, bless your church to help us to grow for your glory and our good. Be with those that are out, that are sick. Be with those that are, are, are traveling. Keep them safe. Once again, be with those that are sick. And we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.